No one will be that eternal priestly bride, but she who has made herself ready. For the battle is raging, the devil is raging. And welcome back to the Brenda Price Ministries podcast. We have been so excited to share these podcasts with you, especially with this series, The Eternal Unveiling. It has been so exciting hearing this revelation unwrapped one episode at a time. We have a few more episodes planned ahead, and we'd love for you to continue along with us. You can do so by subscribing to this podcast. Now, let's listen to part five of this series the Eternal Unveiling with Evangelist Brenda Price. Well, I have mentioned the three feasts that uh, the Jews have, the three main feasts, and how the first one, Passover, was fulfilled when Jesus was crucified. The second one, the Pentecost, of course, was fulfilled when the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2. But the third one is the most interesting by far, because it has not completely been fulfilled. And it's a place where the Jews would make a tabernacle a, a, um, made out of like branches. And they would go dwell under that for seven days. And it was to um, pronounce um, the fact they had been in the desert. But Jesus or fa- the Father had been with them in that dwelling place on their journey through the wilderness. But it was a fulfillment of God bringing them in to the promised land and looking back in retrospect of what he had done and how he had brought them in. And it is a signature of God for um, completion, which we know we have not yet come into. But we're coming into this third fullness of time, and it's called the Feast of Tabernacles. And... um, I'm going to try to explain this a little further tonight in order to give them their rightful uh, illumination on the prophetic stage. These three events were, uh, as I said, times of fullness. Uh, Jesus coming, the Holy Spirit being poured out. And now he's coming to dwell in his people in the wilderness of this earth until she comes into her full representative role as the bride of Jesus Christ. Um, There are scriptures here that I would like to share um, on the fullness of time. We can start with Habakkuk 2.3. For this vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And then there's Galatians 4, 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, under the law. So, again, the arrival of Jesus was the first fullness of time. And it was the exact time for God to unveil his plan of redemption. And suddenly it it all made sense. Uh, The laws given to Moses, the tabernacle, the making of Israel itself, was to be a womb for the Son of God so that all the earth could take part in the heavenly dance. It was a way that we could now come to our Creator in a position that was lost in the Garden of Eden and once again pick up the rhythm of the dance with the Creator and His creation. And God put a penalty on sin from the garden, as you know. But then he paid for it himself. And its price tag was his valuable possession, his only begotten son. And yet what Christ was to purchase had to be of equal value to God. Or he would not have made that kind of large exchange. We were the pearl of great price. And he is the pearl of great price to you and I. 
He was the divine merchant who knew the value of his, what he was going to purchase and that it would be equal to the sacrifice or the price that was paid. Uh, this would pave the way for the completion of all the sons and the bride of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the first fruit of many sons to overcome because he overcame. And the price was paid for us to come into fullness along with our Savior, our elder brother. But most of all, I want him as my bridegroom. And all this so we could mature in the full stature of a man. Not a baby, not a boy, but the full stature of Christ Jesus. Um, let's read Ephesians 4.13. It says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There we have that fullness. This is, friends, the third fullness. That we grow into full stature, become the complete finished work of a bride that has made herself ready, of an overcoming people who represent Jesus Christ, to this earth in a way that he is manifested to them. They see Christ in us because we have come to a time of fullness. Now, this time of fullness is not just reached by a desire. Um, it comes through a lot of intimacy with Christ. It comes through a lot of uh, times of laying aside yourself. But the whole reason you and I were created was to fulfill the heart of God in fullness. God wants to be full. He wants to be complete. And even you and I were groaning for equally. It's a love sickness that won't go away until we are in his arms forever. Until we represent him and bring in the rest of those stragglers, if you will, that have not yet come to the point of surrender that hopefully all of us are reaching toward and coming into. This um, tells us that at some point, all those willing to lay it all down and surrender will walk together in unity and knowledge and full stature. Um, you know, there have been many before us who have achieved this perfect obedience, but that full day cannot take place until the last and final harvest, and that's where we are now. We are in the last harvest of time. And in this precise moment, all the heroes and saints of the past and present will join together with the Godhead and rejoice that fullness has come. And this will not happen because of our knowledge and unity of faith, but in the knowledge and faith of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11.40 says this, God having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. Now what's he talking about there? God having provided some better thing for us, talking about this generation. And that better thing for us, of course, was salvation through the blood of Jesus that the Old Testament uh, folks didn't have. But he didn't leave them out. But he continued to say that they, the saints of the pre-cross era, if you will, without us, should not be made perfect. And as I said earlier, they received the promise. They paid the price to span the ages of time for the vision of fullness that we are entering into. But they're not complete with their reward until we reach that which they paid the price for us to reach. We're now on a single line of understanding with those who have gone before us and the purpose of the great cloud of witnesses who are watching eagerly everything that takes place on this earth. And they, the saints of the past, started this sentence and we will finish it. We'll be one with the sentence. I hope this is making sense and I, I pray that the Holy Spirit gives you revelation on the time we're living in. When God began the book, 
back in Genesis, he had something in mind in the conclusion greater than its beginning. As you know, a seed begins small, and it has to go into death before it resurrects and becomes a tree or a plant. So when God created the seed of, of creation itself, he had in mind what it would become. And you and I are privileged to live in the most wonderful point of all Earth's history. All this was started in type of shadow by the first feast called Passover. As we know, we needed a Redeemer, we needed a Savior, but only because we had to go back to where we left the glory in the garden. And we have to now be redeemed and saved. But that's not the end of the story. That's the beginning. Moses was instructed that Israel was to put the blood of an animal on the lintel and on the doorpost for Passover on their home. And the death angel would not come into that dwelling and take the firstborn. Also, during this feast, they were to eat a lamb and unleavened bread. After they left Egypt, all males were to appear before the Lord, and the first sheaf, signifying the firstborn of the harvest, was to be offered up. And the blood of the sacrificial animal was then to be sprinkled on the altar. I won't go into all the revelation here, but let you know that the second death of hell and separation from God was to be passed over because of the blood of Jesus, who was to be the eternal Passover lamb. It's easy to see, and all biblical scholars agree, that Jesus fulfilled uh, this great feast of Passover. In Moses' day, it was uh, to save them from death, of the death angel. But in our day, through salvation, it is to save us from eternal uh, devastation by being separated from God for all time. Now, I'm going to briefly go over again this second fulfillment of the fullness of times. And um, it's, of course, uh, found in Acts 2, 1, and it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there's your fullness, they were all with one accord in one place. And so this is the second feast. It was the day of Pentecost, and this feed would, feast would occur 50 days after Passover. Now notice again that they were all together in one place in one accord. This goes along with the prophetic understanding of Ephesians 1.10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, times being, being plural, uh, in this case three fullness of times, the Bible said in the fullness of time Jesus came, in the fullness of time as we just read, uh, Pentecost came and then the third fullness of time is the Feast of Tabernacles what we're coming into now but in the fullness of times Ephesians 1.10 says he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are in earth even in him so we're one with that which is in heaven uh, Any time that fullness occurs, there is a gathering and a unity that accompanies it. A bringing together is necessary for the achievement of fullness. And the feast was presented in type and shadow uh, in the past. But they were displayed in fullness with all the components of the past feast combined with the present time of completion. So the latter rain and the former rain are coming together. And this brought the past and present together. In both of these feasts, Pentecost was one of the three main feasts that were celebrated by the Jews. And we know that all Old Testament history is not only factual, but it also serves as types and shadows of a much bigger event that will be greater than the initial feast itself that was a shadow or a picture, if you will, of something that was going to come. It was a prophetic picture. Well, as we've already discussed, the grown seed will be much greater than, this, than the seed itself that produced the full harvest. Um, it is so prophetic as we look at these feasts in order to understand that 
harvest was always the point of victory for Israel. And each harvest would lead us to a new day. Every one of these three feasts was tied in to a harvest. And we are now looking to the fulfillment of the last harvest festival that will produce the full riches of God's heart displayed in a bride without spot, without blemish. These feasts were born out of the desert experience with Moses. And it will be born out of a desert experience for us, friends, as we come through the deserts of, desert of this life and this world that we're passing through. Both the first and the second feast was accomplished within 50 days of one another. Passover was accomplished when the blood of Jesus was shed, so that death, hell, and the grave would have no hold on us. Pentecost came uh, 50 days later, and it would commemorate the conclusion of the harvest of the latter grains. The first loaves to be made from the harvest were to be offered to the Lord at the time of Pentecost. And again, no work was to be done on that day, and all able-bodied men were to be present and sacrifices made. So this feast in its completion, Pentecost, would be indeed the last of the grains to be given as the new age of grace was beginning and the loaves were to be offered to the Lord. And as we know already, the men were to present themselves and offer a sacrifice as was done with all three feasts. On the day of Pentecost, 120 people were offering up their loaves, if you will, with one mind and one accord when the fire fell. Yet, the Comforter had come to the transition, to transition the body of Christ into the new age of grace. And also we see that the end of the last grain harvest would state the fact that one more harvest was beginning. But this last harvest of the year would not end until later in that year with the fruit harvest. So we see that a couple thousand years have passed, and we have not come into the third harvest until now. And the last harvest of the year would be the harvest of fruits. If we go back to the analogy that I gave earlier about the tree and the seed that sprang from it, we will see a clear picture emerging from the three feasts. Again, I will repeat, the first fullness, Galatians 4, 4, was Passover and was presented by the death of a seed, which came into fulfillment with Jesus. And remember that Jesus said, unless a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. The first feast of Passover had everything to do with death. We know that the firstborn of Egypt died that night. And because of the blood on the doorpost, death passed over Israel. As mentioned before, this type and shadow became a full picture of when Jesus died on the cross. And the second death, which was hell, would be passed over us as we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and come into fullness. And Pentecost, the second feast, was the last of the grain harvest. While 120 people sat in that upper room, waiting for the promise that Jesus had given right before he was crucified. They were also there because it was the day of Pentecost, and in fulfillment of the feast and Jesus' promise of the Holy Ghost, tongues of fire fell, and the second fullness was brought to earth. This is the tree as it was growing and maturing. It was getting taller and giving out leaves to heal the nations. This was Christianity right up to the present time. But the tree has not yet reached its greatest potential. It is putting forth its buds. On the next uh, part of this podcast, this, the one after this one, <laughs> we are going to go into the third feast. God bless you, friends, as we end another podcast. I hope you continue to listen to all of them and that you be full with the understanding of the hour you live in. Come in, for the feast is now ready. God bless you. This podcast has been a production of Brenda Price Ministries. Evangelist Brenda Price has more materials available on this subject, including her most recent book titled The Eternal Unveiling. It can be found at our website, along with other resources we have made available. The website can be found at brendapriceministries.weebly.com. 
www.thebeautyfulmind.com.